Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and in this video I will teach you the importance of visual weight. Let's get started. Most people when they shoot images they cannot see, they are unable to register anything that's behind the model. They just don't see the background and don't see the issues with the background and uh, it also um you know relates to professional photographers i found a really cool example of someone teaching composition on an image with a shit composition which i think is fucking hysterical most people don't see the background when they shoot images they just see the model the you know the object they're focusing on but anything other than that doesn't exist they just don't even register it and that's the difference between a snapshot and a photograph when a professional photographer you know should be able to register all these destructions but i found a really cool example where someone is teaching composition and has no fucking idea about composition because yeah he's teaching the rule of thirds and yeah she's you know on the money in terms of the framing but if you look closely, there is this massive black pole sticking out of her head. It's the same color and tone as a hat and a blouse, and it literally looks like a brain extension, okay? So she looks like some kind of a sci-fi unicorn. And then you got this really bray, uh, bright gray background of the rooftop, and it just pops, okay? It really pops. So the visual weight of this element is really heavy. And you cannot not notice it so that's a problem and uh, there are other examples here by the same photographer you got these windows here kind of you know coming out of her head there's something sticking out of her freaking forehead and there's a doorway really close to her mouth which kind of makes her mouth look rectangular and there's not a pull in here so if you look at all these destructions this is shit so what I'm trying to tell you guys is that, you know, people just don't see these things. And you can find an example like that all over the internet. Look at this, okay? There's a, a pipe going through her chest and another one through her fucking body. She looks like uh, one of these um, uh, characters from the movie Exorcist, you know, when the, the mast fell from the from the church and kind of impaled the, the actor. And, you know, uh, or something like this, which is even worse. Both of these bad languages, by the way, are terrible, very fake and just, oh. But anyway, it's Japan, so can you do? And, you know, there are a lot of examples. Like, look at this wedding photography with a tree sticking out of a fucking shoulder, you know? And it's, dude, I can go to a professional photographer's website and find you examples like this. Because most people don't see that, okay? Now, in terms of composition in, in this image, because I want to use this image as an example, because I think a fantastic example for this, there are a lot of elements of weight in this image, okay? And I want to show you. So, first of all, when we look at images, we're going to be drawn to certain things, like, for example, human figures. So, there you go. We got human figure one, and there are two, but it's a group, and there's three. So, you got a triangle here between them, okay? Then we have these uh, barrels, which are kind of sitting on the, on the bright background. Also, they're quite warm, right? They're kind of yellowish. So they're going to put a lot of attention because everything else is gray. And you're going to get, you're going to have a secondary triangle here, uh, like this, okay? And this is really cool. And then you have this um, air conditioning unit here, which is dark on a, on a brighter background. And you're going to have another triangle here. And you got this ship framed really well uh, by all these anchors the visual anchors which are creating some weight to the image now the object that's going to create some weight is this saturated kind of a, not oversaturated but slightly saturated object here on the wall i didn't want it to become brighter or warmer than any of these humans because i didn't want it to be to become more important than them if i did that and i cranked it up it would become too important so if i you know go here to my uh, to my scene in blender and I'm going to select this material here, and uh, if I can, wait a minute, this is a instance object. Let me just select this uh, cylinder here in the back. That's the one. And go to materials. If I, you know, if I oversaturated this, right, like this, you know, it would be way too strong, okay? If I did something like this, okay? See what I mean? How strong this is? How, how much of a pull it, it, it generates? That's a visual weight, okay? So try to go easy. You need to look at everything in your scene and weight it as one, okay? The entire image needs to be visually balanced. That's the key. And you need to balance it with colors, anchors, saturation, brightness, sharpness, etc. There are many elements that uh, you can use, many tools 
to create these um, kind of like, uh, you know, off balances, okay? Like, for example, let's talk about the ceiling, okay? If I take the ceiling, for example, here, we have a lot of, you know, uh, visual weight, um, visual weights in here, right? They're really heavy elements, but because they aligned and you could clearly see they in some sort of a formation here, they become one object and this entire ceiling becomes one massive element, which is um, sort of outweighed by the uh, by this floor, by this you know bright element here, the strip on the floor. So this element, okay, outweighs this one here on on the top, right? So this one, right? And you got another frame framing this image with two diagonal lines going this way and this way, that add kind of like a dynamism and kinetic energy to the image okay which is why by the way i placed this ship at an angle and there's not a reason why i did that but uh let's not go too deep into that another weight here is going to be in this on this engine where you have these lights but these lights are pulled by uh, this generator and the warm light in this corner look what happens when i'm going to unlock this uh, layer here because i painted over it you see that if this light wasn't here, this tiny warm light, these lights would not be sort of off balance by anything on the top. You see what I mean? It's too much pull in this area because you got these lights and you got this light. This light is tiny, but it's really warm, okay? And it pulls a lot of attention. It doesn't have to be big because it's so warm and so bright. It's gonna pull and it's gonna be almost of the same weight as this, okay? So the easiest way to check if your image is balanced is to zoom out, okay? If you don't see anything sticking out, you know, um, then you, you have a decent image, all right? Then, you know, you have framing, like for example, I framed this image with windows, but tiny movement to my camera would ruin that. For example, if I move my camera a little bit to the left, these windows here will become a wall because I cannot see the uh, window panes. If I closed all the gaps between the uh, elements, like for example, the hand of this guy would be touching the engine, okay? Uh, you know, the top of the suitcase here would be would be touching the, the vessel. This air condition would be merging with the cockpit and the, and the hull of the vessel. It would just wouldn't work because you're losing the separation between elements. The reason why this image is working is because you got these separations. So look at that. If I grab a brush and I'm just going to brush you all the separations between elements, you'll see how how carefully this is designed, okay? See all these separations here? This is all separated. Look at this. Nothing is accidental here, okay? Everything is on purpose, all right? So when you're composing an image, you really need to think and sort of look at everything and uh, kind of like an eye bird's view from the top, okay? Look at the general scene. Don't focus on the vessel. Don't focus on the humans. Don't focus on anything. Everything is equally important in your image, okay? Granted, there are some hero objects, like, for example, the vessel. It's clearly a hero object. But if you're going to put too much importance on the vessel itself, everything else loses importance. And you want to frame that ship with everything outside of it by using visual anchors the visual weight anchors right and you know like i said you can create them in many different ways now guys don't get frustrated because composition especially you know advanced composition which you know you need to possess in order to create composites because you know you have a scene this scene basically was built from scratch okay and you know i had to model everything except for the figures because the figures are the the soldiers are from Jamba's pack from Gamrot, and it's a fantastic pack. There's a link in the video description. If you're interested, grab it. They're a bit expensive, but fuck me, they're good. Um, and, you know, they, they're just world-class uh, models. And I love using them because they look so realistic. But everything else is modeled by me, and then, you you know, I had to assemble everything by myself, which means you need to design the whole scene. And then you need to find the framing for it, right? So the best way to do that is, uh, the way I did that is I created the building, um, just the ceiling, the walls and the, and the windows, and then I found the frame I actually liked, and then I placed a vessel, and I found the frame for that, and then I designed everything around it. This is like with adding lights. If you're going to add seven lights, you're going to get confused. Put one light, then a second light, and then maybe the third light. 
if you have more experience you can you know keep adding lights but i would start with one light then second light then third light don't put all the lights at once there's no way to see where the light is coming from in professionals you know when we shoot photography portraits whatever we start with one light okay unless you really know what you're doing and what kind of look you're going for and you kind of you know do it you know on auto that's cool but if you're searching for certain looks and kind of interesting angles and lighting then you're gonna start with one light so start with the main object, the hero object, and then start framing it with stuff, okay? I place these barrels here because it frame the tip of this vessel. These barrels are here because it frame the back of it, okay? This human's gonna pull your attention and then you're gonna go on all over the wing here because it's a massive leading line and it's bright on the, on a darker background, so it's gonna lead you into the image. If I'm gonna go back here, see what I mean? You get led into the image here, you, you see these humans, you get pulled here, you get pulled here, then you see the text, you're going down here to this human and up. There's a lot of concentration of details here too, right? Then you go here because of this red light and the contrast, etc. So you got these lights here on the top and another leading line from this guy to this, you know, to the right side of the image. So nothing is accidental, guys, okay? Nothing is accidental. Not a single element in this image is accidental, right? Everything is placed with premeditation. And you need to think that way in order to create a good composition. And if something doesn't fit, well, fix it. And the last thing I can tell you is that, you know, when you design something, take your time. Create an image, come back to it tomorrow when, you, when you're fresh. Or flip it. This is not a good way to do it. You know, this is what artists do quite often. So they, um, they're going to have a canvas. And they're going to, you know, create a... I mean, let me just create a... There you go, a layer here. And I'm going to control T that and I'm going to flip it horizontally to see, you know, if my composition works. Okay, because your eyes are getting used to the way you look at your image so much that you cannot just see certain things flip your image and see if something immediately pops into your into your brain something annoys your brain you know if something is off that means probably is okay because we are used to looking at the world and the world usually is organized in a quite quite of a balanced fashion right and you know what's pleasing and what's not pleasing if you see a beautiful landscape it's pleasing and the vista points are in certain areas because the composition of a landscape from that particular venue point is pleasing to the brain, okay? The composition is nice, you see what I mean? So the same thing with your image, guys. So take your time, don't rush it. And like I said, you need to weight every single item in your image when you're composing. This is really important, okay? Do not focus on one fucking thing. You need to focus on everything. This is, for example, why when I'm teaching photography, I always um, try to teach people to shoot with eyes open, which means, you know, when you pull your camera, the viewfinder to your face, what most people do, they close the other eye. Most professional photographers are going to have two eyes open because what you want to do, especially when you're shooting street photography, because you want to see what's happening around you. This is why, for example, when I'm uh, rendering, I never uh, use past part two, uh, this bullshit here. I never do that, okay? Because you want to train your brain. You can darken it a little bit, okay? But you want to train your brain to be able to see image anywhere, okay? The best way to learn composition is to go to a really busy town. Like, you know, Tokyo is fantastic for it. This is why I like teaching photography in Tokyo, because it's really difficult sometimes to find a good image, because there's so much shit on the street, you know? Like, I'll show you an image here. It's a busy street in Tokyo, and you'll see how much crap is in there. And what I used to do, I brought them to a very congested place, and I used to tell them, find me order in this chaos, okay? You look at this street, and you find me so like, you know, something like this, right? Find me order. Find me a frame in this mess. Because this is how you really will learn composition, like, you know, like this. You see, like, for example, years later when I shot this, I'm still seeing things that, for example, annoy me. Like, for instance, I think that this bit of this, of this text here is a little bit too strong of a visual anchor. Um, you know, probably would be better if this was either more into the image or completely out of the image. So this probably could be cropped, you know, or replaced with something, etc. But, you know, sometimes a millimeter can make a huge difference, right? But, you know, occasionally... It's, but sometimes it's so difficult to see things in a mess like this that you're always going to miss something. But generally, this is a really good practice. So when you have something simple, one object, two object, three object, 
it's a really easy. But when you get something more complicated, things become a little bit more troublesome, right? So practice on simple things. And remember that even if you shoot one thing, okay, one thing, one model is composed of many elements. So treat these elements as visual anchors and you think how to place your lighting, how to place your camera, how to play with your angles in order for this model to look pleasing, not just from a specific perspective, but also in the frame, okay? Remember, you're shooting, the whole frame is your image, not just the model, all right? So stop focusing on the model, guys. I see it in 95% of images. I can clearly see that people are focusing just on the model and they don't see anything else and they want to put the damn thing in the center and it just looks awful. Now, in this particular instance, I'm breaking the rules. What I mean is that this, this positioning of this vessel, because it's slightly offset to the right, which means the front of the vessel is closer to the right hand side of the frame than the left hand side which is something I would never do if this vessel was here alone. If there was nothing else in the frame, this wouldn't work. But because we have this guy here and this can and this guy here, this kind of merges and outweights whatever is happening on this side. So it becomes equally important as the vessel. But if it wasn't, you know, if nothing else was here, it was just a vessel, no guys, no lifts, no cans, no nothing, this wouldn't work this composition if this was just a plane here just a vessel this uh, the entire plane should be moved to the left okay so i don't know if you can find it there you go um select objects boom so this should be probably you know somewhere here okay something like this right this would be probably a better framing for this vessel right but because i have other elements that again outweigh the elements on the ship the whole composition works because I'm not focusing just on the ship. You follow? All right. Well, hope it helps you out, guys. Best of luck with your composition. Like I said, don't get frustrated because it's really difficult and it's going to take you some time to learn it and master it. And, you know, uh, it took me 20 years to get to where I am right now in terms of composition. So, you know, it's not going to happen over a day or two, but um, I'm trying to make you aware of things that are really important in terms of composition. And we have fantastic courses on that. We have design course, which will teach you a lot about composition. We have composing for 3D artworks and also the generator course, which are part of the membership, but you can get them also as standalone courses on our store on blenderbox.com. And all these three courses are phenomenal for learning composition through compositing or basically some theory and practice, etc. Okay, so go ahead and grab them if you don't have them. And there's going to be definitely more content coming on this subject because no many people actually know what the fuck they're talking about and there's just no information out there about it at all because to be honest even looking at art station there are very few people who have like impeccable composition i can name few of them you know out of the top of my head like for example jan urshel is one of them he is phenomenal in terms of composition and lighting and there are many many others but some even fantastic artists like really talented i mean really talented sculptors or modelers they have fucking no clue about composition so they have this fantastic model it looks phenomenal beautiful composition and i mean the beautiful um design and textures and everything and the composition of the render is shite so you know not everyone knows how to do it but there are exceptions and uh, you should guys learn from you know from these top dogs because they really are amazing but anyway more content is coming from blender bros on this so hopefully you guys are gonna improve i'm gonna start seeing some really awesome renders we have people on our coaching and community on the membership and uh they're improving really quickly especially some of them because you know people are in different in different speeds and they also have different amount of time that they can devote to studying but there are some folks who are improving really really quickly and i'm very pleased to see that because it's really rewarding to see people grow and getting better and they get excited too so have a look at our membership because it's a fantastic offer we're going to be rebuilding the membership um this year we're going to be uh, kind of restructuring it to make it even more interesting and more enticing so hopefully you guys uh, can join us there thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one